Hello, Patrick. <laughs> Your mother tells me that you never miss a video of mine, and I'm really grateful for that. She also tells me that you have questions for me. I thought it was high time that I made a video just for you, where I answer those questions. Um, we'll, let, we'll let the rest of Book 2 listen in. That's all right with you. Uh, but before we get to the questions, your two questions, there's a subject that has come up recently between you and your mother, and she has brought it up with me, and I thought I'd talk about it with you. And you know what the subject is. It's the whole idea of you getting a dog. Uh, it's understandable uh, that that your mother would ask me about it, since I know a lot about dogs. It, this is not a question, but all dogs on the, in the world concern me, so I'm horning my way in. And I wanted to... I know that you, that you are a strong boy. I know that you are a brave boy. Uh, and y those are necessary to have a dog, because you're going to protect this animal from all the things in the world that might want to do it harm. You're going to make your dog's life wonderful. And that requires strength and bravery. <laughs> but I want you to think of two things when we're talking about this subject. Uh, and w number one is the number of days that you spend in hospital. You, there are days where you go before dawn and you don't finish up until the sun has gone down. Think about your dog on those days. He can't come with you to the hospital. He would be bored. He would be lonely. And the things that he needs, the care that he needs, would have to be done by your mother. You wouldn't be able to do it. You know how busy you are on those days. And thing number two, I know what you're thinking. Strong and brave boys always think this way. You're thinking, I'll make up for the days in hospital by the days when I'm not in hospital. I'll make up for it. And I understand that completely, but think about those days. Think about the bad days. Your mother doesn't know what those days actually feel like, but I do. And you and I both know the most you can do is sit up in bed and read <laughs> on those days. You could no more walk a dog or play with a dog on those bad days than you could fly to the moon. So you can't, it doesn't do any good to say, I'll make up for the days in hospital by the days when I'm home. It doesn't do any good to say that. You know that. You know as well as I do. I understand how badly you want a dog. But you're not in a position to take care of one. Your priority should be you. Right? <laughs> you know this. I know you know this. I'm just, I thought I would add my voice to what your mother has already told you. What you need to do is concentrate on yourself. For now. And get out of this hole that you're in. What you need to do is get your blood panels back to normal. What you need to do is get your appetite back to normal. What you need to do is get your balance back to normal. You can't walk a dog if you can't even walk down a hallway without wobbling over, right? You know that. So what you need to do is get those things back to normal. You need to get out of this hole that you're in. Listen to your doctors, listen to your mother, and continue being you. Continue being brave continue being strong and get out of this hole and then get everything back to normal and hold it there for four months <laughs> that's Frida <laughs> she says hi <laughs> uh, you need to hold those things there for four months and then once you've done that we can revisit the idea of a dog there's still a lot more to talk about it's no small thing it's not a small thing at all. You know that. It's a big thing. You're taking on a living thing. That's a big responsibility. But we can't even talk about it now. Right? I mean, we can't even talk about it now. You can barely take care of yourself now. And you are the sole object of your mother's concern. Bringing another person into, into the equation now wouldn't be fair to anybody. It wouldn't be fair to you. It wouldn't be fair to your mother. And it wouldn't be fair to the dog. So let's postpone it. Let's postpone talking about that until we get back where we belong. Solid blood panels, solid appetite, and your balance back, your ability to be a bouncing, running little terror. <laughs> You're not able to do that now. Let's wait until you are, and until you solidly are. So I'm not talking about a good week, four months. And then we'll, revi we'll revisit the subject. That we'll, we'll return to the subject and talk all about it. 
Uh, so that is that is the subject that I wanted to get to before I get to your two questions. And now I will get to your two questions. And your first question was uh, one that many, many people have asked, although many adults would probably pretend they hadn't because <laughs> most, most adults are kind of dumb. <laughs> and that is, who would win in a fight between Thor and Superman? That is an excellent question. Especially since they're so well they're so well matched in a lot of ways. The most important way being that they are both unbelievably strong. Just unbelievably strong. The the, the football stadium that that you have gone to many times and you are going to go again. You are going to be back many, many times. Thor could lift that football stadium over his head easily. And so could Superman. And they have that in common, and then they are balanced out. Thor, for instance, has his magic hammer. And he also has thousands of years of experience at fighting. Superman, on the other hand, has... Uh, what are you doing, baby? What are you doing? Leave that alone. <laughs> See what I mean? Dogs are forever getting into things. <laughs> uh, Superman has other advantages himself. He's super fast, for instance. He has heat vision. Has... Uh, super hurricane breath those things can affect thor from a distance and thor doesn't have them so you've got the the center commonality they are both incredibly strong and then you've got e each one has counterbalancing advantages so you're wondering who would win in a fight well uh there was actually a comic book uh years and years ago in which the justice league superman's team and the avengers thor's team uh team up to fight a bad guy. But before they team up, they briefly misunderstand each other and start fighting. <laughs> and in that fight, Thor and Superman square off against each other. And that will give you at least one version of who would win. <laughs> and you, you, you can make up, anybody can have a bad day, right? And so it, there's never a definitive answer of who would win one way or another, but that at least gives you one version, that comic book does. And by the time you watch this video, your mother will have a copy of that comic for you. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it, because <laughs> it really, really is good. Feel free to tell her what you think. She'll pass it along to me. You're going to love it, I think. So that, that is question number one, and my answer is not, is not very helpful. My answer is that on any given day, either one of them could win. They're too evenly matched. Uh, it's going to be up to you to decide. Uh, and then your second question... I'm afraid, is every bit as complex. It's every bit as hard for me to give you a simple answer. Your second question was, what's it like to live in America? <laughs> and my answer to that is, it depends. It depends on where in America you live. It depends on what America you live in. There are actually millions of Americas. Right now, today, right at this moment, there are millions of Americas. I have lived in a lot of them. I've lived in an America where going to the grocery store and back was extremely dangerous to do. I've also lived in America where nobody on the entire street ever locks their front door. I've lived in both those places. Those are both America. There are some major differences between here and your home. In, in your home, uh, people pay into the government, and the government sets up a, a, a service that pays for everybody's health care. So that nobody has to do that. You all sort of band together to pay for each other's health care. Because health care needs are different at all times, right? Some people go 30, 30, 40, 50 years without ever needing any health care. Other people, like for instance you, suddenly need some of it, or a lot of it. Since that's uneven, and since we all live in a society together, uh, your country bands together to, to make sure that that doesn't cost anything. That everybody sort of pays for it together. That's not true in this country. So, uh, for instance, your own hospital visits would, in this country, cost your mother an enormous amount of money. And it, it'd just be the way of it. That's just the way it is. There are plenty of, of uh, politicians in this country who would like to change that, who would like to make it a little easier, uh, for instance, for boys like you. Uh, but that's one thing. And it's not just health care. It's that, it's that money dictates a lot of what it's like to live in America. And that's your question, what it's like to live in America. Uh, money dictates a lot of what it's like to live here. I think more than it should. Uh, so that the more money you have, the more freedom you have, the more fun you have. And I don't think that should be true. Do you? Uh, but 
even with very little money, uh, there's still a great deal of freedom. And boy, oh boy. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know I don't know how to put it other than to say that this is this can be a very fun country to live in. Uh, it's big and it's beautiful. There are parts of it that are beautiful, large parts of it that are beautiful, and there are some wonderful people. Uh, so in answer to your question, <laughs> I know I'm not being very helpful here, but in answer to your question, what's it like to live in America? I'm going to give you two answers. Number one is the same as I gave you with Superman versus Thor, which is it depends. And I know that's not helpful. <laughs> that's not the kind of answer that you want. The second answer that I want to give you to what it's like to live in America is come and find out. Come and see how many Americas you can find. There are millions of them here. Come and see what Americas you see. I would strongly suggest coming to live here for a bit. Maybe travel around and see what it's like to live in America yourself because it's a little bit hard to describe. <laughs> and I want to stress here, I'm not, I'm not meaning to nag you, <laughs> but I want to stress... You can't do that until you get out of this hole that you're in. You can't do anything like this until you get out of this hole that you're in. So, solid blood panels, solid appetite, solid balance for four months. But you're working on it anyway. <laughs> so, so I, I just thought I'd make this video for you. I'm sorry that I don't have definitive answers. The All of Thor's fans would kill me if I said that Superman would win. And all of Superman's fans would kill me if I said that Thor would win. <laughs> so so uh, we're going to have to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so in answer to both your questions, my answer is it depends. Thor might have a good day and... <laughs> And when you come to America, you might encounter a really great America. I hope you do. I hope I'm here to welcome you. Uh, but anyway, that's all I had to say for now. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up your video. <laughs> and I'm going to say goodbye to the rest of BookTube as well. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, and I hope you have a good week. Uh, and I will uh, talk to you again. <laughs> so uh, feel free uh, to ask your mother for a Christmas present <laughs> because you have a comic book to read. <laughs> I'm going to sign off for now, but I'll see you soon. Thank you.